So in the, the time that we didn't shoot, because we were off in Tahiti on vacation or whatever the hell we were doing, I don't even really remember actually the last four weeks. <laughs> I, there was I, a lot of television during yeah, those four there, weeks. Yeah, there was a fair amount of television that got released in that time. Uh, so Jessica Jones uh, uh, aired its entire uh, run during that time. Uh, Leftovers and uh, Arrow and Flash uh, all had new episodes during that time. And uh, there's a fair amount of news with uh, some new shows that are coming out next year as well. So it's uh, a lot to talk about. All right, so I guess uh, first things first, uh, you haven't gotten to the end of it yet, um, but you're partway through now. Jessica Jones, correct? I'm four episodes into Jessica Jones. Okay. The last thing I saw was the reveal with Malcolm. Okay. Yeah, so the uh, Jessica Jones so far, uh, I've read, or read, sorry, I have seen now the entire uh, uh, series, and uh, you know what? I really enjoyed it. Like, it was uh, a much different uh, tone, I guess, than uh, than Daredevil was. Like, a, a lot of people that I was kind of hang out with on the internet were, were really down on them having another um, television show set in that same kind of gritty you can't tell. kitchen thing. But you can't even tell. Like, the, the setting is very, like, is, is very kind of a background character in this show uh, yep. in a very minor way compared to how it was in, in uh, Daredevil. Daredevil was protecting uh, the area around him mm -hmm. and was... A hero for Hell's Kitchen. Right. So it needed to play a more important role. With Jessica, that's not part of the no, story that's the, going on No, the story is really character-driven, and uh, the performances that they're able to get out of these actors were amazing. Like, uh, um, for all the people that thought that Kristen Ritter was going to be terrible in the role, oh, I think she did, she's so she, she good. did so good. She's like, it was, so good. Like, it was really well done. Uh, all the supporting cast was actually amazing, too. Like, her uh, drug-addled... Uh, uh, room. Uh, neighbor down the hall Malcolm or whatever down the hall, yeah yep. um he's amazing uh the uh, actual reveal on um uh was it uh, matt smith was the actor who's the uh the actor who plays um uh the purple man in david, tennant david tennant plays okay. kilgrave hey <laughs> wrong doctor who ha <laughs> um but yeah yeah he was amazing i mean the the uh the way that they actually pimped him and and the maturity behind the writing and uh, the way that they actually allowed uh women in the show to be actual really fully developed characters like fully they have, realized yeah they yep. have flaws they're not necessarily uh, perfect her, all the time uh, they're not trish yeah the proto hellcat she's very very good as well and very much her own character yeah uh carrie ann moss also too carrie ann moss is like the best actor she's in this so whole thing good. yeah she's, she's so good she's fantastic and the arc um, that, that she's given uh is brutal i mean like the, the story like for for not having a dark setting uh, the story itself has a lot of darkness in it. Like it's a, they 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 tackle a lot of uh, really mature topics, and uh, a lot of the characters don't get out of it really unscathed. Now, having said that, I mean, I think in this particular show, it felt a little long. By the time you got to episode thirteen, I think they probably could have trimmed it down a little bit or introduced okay. a little bit more. Uh, there were a couple of storylines that were just uh, they're they're kind of nonsensical, but they also introduced a couple of characters that I didn't think would ever see the light of day with regards to uh, being in any of these television shows. Um, and then there was also uh, you haven't gotten there yet. I'm going to mention him but uh, uh there's one character in particular that makes a uh, uh an appearance where it's uh um he starts off being kind of normal but he kind of descends into the character that he becomes in the comics which is oh, okay. uh, fantastic that's and, very cool uh, they introduce quite a bit of uh just spoilerage with regards to um how jessica got her powers it's a little bit different than the comics they're, yeah. yeah they're slowly on revealing this as they go for me at this point yeah. so i mean i've gotten a chance to go over and digest each of the first four that i've watched and um the reveal for luke cage uh being a superpowered being, of course, he's only ever referred to as Luke, and if you don't know the comics really well, you're not going to know who he is right away. No. Uh, so I thought that was really well done. Uh, and then, yeah, we're revealing, of course, her post-traumatic stress disorder from the incidents that took place prior to with Kilgrave. They're, they're slowly revealing this information as they go, yeah. and I'm really liking the way that it yep. works. Building up who she is and why she is what she is well, and is it, fantastic. You don't, you don't get a lot of shows that actually really deal with uh, post traumatic stress disorder. Um, Not in like a, this in a, in a sensible way. Like it's usually one of these this week's episode of you know this special episode of blah blah blah, and then they have like one episode that deals with it, and mm -hmm. then it doesn't reoccur. Whereas with her character, it's something that she battles. Oh, it's, the entire it's haunting her run. at any time. Yeah, and uh, the the way that they handle it is actually quite good. So, the I mean, the purple imagery with the flashbacks yep. and recanting the street names, all really good stuff. I mean, I'm of course not a psychologist, but everything they're doing does feel very very authentic for someone that's suffered from an incredibly traumatic event yeah. and it's it's uh, a, a metahuman uh, caused traumatic event so there's going to be a little bit of license for creativity and for how they handle it yeah, with the and symptoms I have to imagine that, yeah. that you know someone being able to take control of your mind like this is going to leave a horrible horrible scar well yeah and yeah, honestly the the way that he's presented uh, the purple man is presented in the the show going forward from where you're at right now um yeah it's terrifying what he can do and uh, they 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 take a lot of 
uh, creative license was showing the effects of what he's able to do. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, like it's uh, and it's so different from Loki's mind control. Yeah. I don't know if you observed that or not. It, it's completely yeah. Like <clears throat> the, the people are not very like they're they're not really aware that they're doing what they do, and then when they're made aware of it, they panic because they can't stop it. And they know, can't like stop it. it. Yeah, yeah they still, can't control I must it. still oh, carry out this yeah. activity. Uh, very very creepy. No, it's uh, it's it was amazing run. So I mean, if you get a chance to watch it, you haven't watched it yet. Make sure watch that you it do. This weekend. Um, I guess uh, for the other shows that we watch, uh, you haven't caught up with Leftovers yet. Uh, uh, Lens was the last episode I saw of The Leftovers where Carrie Coon was interviewing, is her name Regina King? Yes. Her character uh, with the stolen questionnaire from the department. What's the departure department called? I can't yeah, think of the name the, of it. The post departure department or whatever. Right. Yeah, like, and yeah. going over the interview with her. Uh, that is one of the best scenes I've seen on TV this year. Yep. So far. What an awesome performance by both actresses. I was absolutely <laughs> riveted to the screen. So good. Uh, all I'm going to say, because you haven't gone there yet, is that the show uh, fulfills every promise that I possibly thought it could have with regards to where they're going with the story. Because it just gets, like, as nuts as the first episode was and as nuts as everything has been so far leading up to this, uh, it just kicks it in overdrive good. process episode that you're in. And good. Uh, the, it shit gets so fucked up. And uh, the, the state that they're at right now... Um, it was like one of the biggest kind of, uh, I guess, tense story moments that I've ever seen on television with regards to what they're, they're doing. I've seen some people saying that, that it's just pretentious, highly polished garbage, and I could not disagree <laughs> more with this idea. You know idea. what? I, maybe I'm like, I, you don't understand this. That's maybe my I, only logical I eat conclusion. Tasty garbage, maybe I don't know because oh, I love it. I, I, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's one of the best shows out there. And uh, uh, and the hour with um, uh, the Reverend Matt. I'm I try to remember the actor's name now. Oh gosh, I can never remember his name either. Uh, Another one of the doctors, Chris Christopher Eccleston, of Christopher course. Eccleston. Matt is the name of the character, yeah. and his wife when he brought her to Mary, the doctor yeah. and then got locked out of the town. Uh, what an unbelievable hour that yeah, was! What I, I don't a know if great yeah, teleplay. It, it kind of mirrors the episode that he had in um, the first season where it was all about him and when he was trying to raise money to actually buy his church to from buy the, his church from the guilty remnant yeah. actually purchasing yeah. it or whatever. And, and, uh, and of course, they make all the references yeah. to Job. I mean, they hit you over the head with Job references, but what the guy went through is <laughs> what a well, poor son of a bitch. Yeah, the the amount of uh, biblical reference that happens in the show. I mean, like, yeah, you don't really even have to pay attention to to get what's happening because they they really do hit you over the head with well, it at times. But yeah, <laughs> it's. That's also, you know, not only their own doing, because the people in the town are so convinced that it's some kind of a divine situation to begin with, being southern United States, of course there's a lot of people that's going to think it's God's influence yep. for what's happening to them. And it makes perfect sense. I absolutely love it. It fits for what's going on. Yeah, no, it's uh, honestly, it's uh, out of all the shows that uh, I've kind of tuned into for this year, uh, it was the biggest surprise. And uh, so far it's been the like the best thing that uh, I've seen on television in like forever. Like, I would for count it so as a bigger long. surprise too, because... I, I didn't think it would improve like this in its no. sophomore season. No, like at, at the at the end of the first season, um, you're left with the impression that they could go in one direction, but they were maybe just teasing you with it, and it was more just going to be like real world drama, which is fine because the cast, like I said, I could watch them. Do oh, anything I could watch and, them do anything. You know, they could play croquet for the entire episode, and that would be like the. <gasps> I wish uh, they'd the do best that. Episode. That'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it would leftover seriously croquet be that good. Action. Yeah, like leftover, I, yeah, leftover lawn bowling. <laughs> there you go. Anything like uh, the the people that are in the show are amazing, and uh, they keep on getting like guest appearances by actors that you haven't seen in a while or that you've never really had a chance to see on TV like this, and it's it's all been just great. It. But uh, they could have gone one direction and kept it safe and just kept it dramatic and what they've done is they've just gone uh the other direction where they were hinting at uh full bore uh they've completely committed to the idea that they've had with this show uh it has nothing to do with the book now it's completely divorced itself well, so from it's the completely reality off of the book, book now yeah. which is um, great because yeah, now they're is, untethered by anything yeah exactly they can kind of go any direction but oh. the direction they are going is, is super compelling yeah and, the choices uh, they've made have been fantastic and uh uh, I, I mean, they're making it look easy. They're yeah. making it look easy, and I don't know how they're doing it. I'm just hoping, like, I watched it was, the, I guess the 10th episode was uh, this past Sunday. Uh, I don't know if there are any more episodes before the new year or if there are any more episodes at all this season. I'm hoping that there are because uh, um, you're left wanting way more. There's by the time 10 that or done. 12, I don't remember. I'm hoping it's 12 because uh, there's a lot, a little bit more that they could do, but uh, the, the climax that happened uh, I don't think The Leftovers amazing. is going anywhere anytime soon. No, if, if nothing else, they'll get a third season if, uh, uh, if, <laughs> if there's any justice in the world, but we'll have to see but uh, uh, that was that. 